Coming up on Hands on iOS, iOS 14.2 is here. I'm going to walk you through the new stuff so you go and download it. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless while their employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Folks, Apple just released iOS 14.2, a an update to iOS that is incredibly important because of the security features and the bug fixes. But along with that come some new features that are worth checking out. So I thought I'd run through some of the new things to make sure you go and download that as soon as possible because you want those security updates available on your devices regardless of whether you just use your device at home or use it on the go. So get this update if you haven't yet, if you've been waiting on it, let me tell you what's going on. With the introduction of iOS 14.2, come 13 new emoji, including a smiling face with a tear, a ninja, pinched fingers, an anatomical heart, a black cat, a mammoth, a polar bear, a dodo, a fly, a bell pepper, a tamale, a bubble tea cup, a potted plant, a pinata, a plunger, a wand, a feather, a hut, and a lot more than that. So let's take a look at a couple of these, some of my favorites, as it were, um, including the dodo bird, which is just adorable. So you've got a dodo bird here. I'll send that to my fake account. A boomerang right there. And let's see, what else do we want to do? I think one of the most popular new additions is the pinched hand right there, which to me reminds me of somebody kind of doing this and talking to you right in your face. Um, these are just some of the new emoji that are available in iOS 14.2. But if new emoji are the thing that gets you to make that update, then go ahead and make that happen. It is worth it to get those new features. Now, along with the introduction of emoji comes a new feature for the HomePod and your other iOS devices, sort of, called Intercom. What Intercom is, is a feature that allows you to communicate with a family using your HomePod at home. Apple showed this off at its recent Apple event for the iPhone uh, and HomePod by showing someone driving home from work and communicating with their family to let them know that they had ordered pizza and that when they got there, there was going to be pizza. So let me show you how uh, this works. We'll launch the Home app. And of course, this assumes that you have updated and upgraded your iOS devices to the latest version. And once you've done that, then you will see in the top right corner a little waveform icon. And this waveform icon, icon is the uh, icon for Intercom. Now, you have to have a HomePod and you have to have your iOS devices updated to the latest version. But once you've done that, it's as simple as tapping that button, saying a message that you would like to say, and then hitting the stop button which is also the done button, to then send that message to the house. What happens is the uh, HomePod will chime and then it will push that message out and everyone can hear it. What's cool is that it will also be available on other devices. So folks can see a prompt on their own phones for the, uh, the intercom message and be able to listen to it there and respond to it as well. So while it is a HomePod based feature, it is a feature that does work with different iOS devices, Apple Watch, etc., around your house. The next one is the music recognition and new and a new play widget. So uh, I had mentioned this in a recent episode where I was talking about the control center upgrades and folks were kind of wondering where I don't see that. I don't see that. So I'm going to swipe down from the top right because I have a, an iPhone without a home button. If you have an iPhone with a home button, it's swiping from the bottom. So I'll swipe down from the type top right. I'm going to go ahead and put this on do not disturb mode, but you will see now down at the very bottom, 
is a an icon that looks a whole lot like Shazam, and that is because it is the Shazam icon. This is the way to simply uh, have your device listen to music around you and give you suggestions. Oh, that's this song by this person or this band, and to be able to get it from Apple Music or wherever you get your music. So simply tapping on that will allow you to trigger a music recognition session, which will then listen for the song. Now, if you're wondering how to get Shazam onto your control center, you'll have to check out my video all about control center, how to use it, how to edit it, how to do everything there uh, so that you can also do that. And then the now playing screen is a little bit different. So if I tap and hold on the now playing screen in the top right, you will see a suggestion of music I could listen to, a play icon, and then down at the bottom is the way that I can control other speakers and TVs within my home that are connected to my Wi-Fi. So it's just redesigned. It's many of the same tools that were available before, but just in a new way. Although this nice uh, suggestion for music to listen to is a brand new feature that I think is quite nice. Up next, we have optimized charging for AirPods. So I'm going to switch over the camera here. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by LastPass. What is it that makes LastPass so unique and vital for your business? IT and security leaders can take back control of password security. They'll have the control they need from a central dashboard. Businesses can customize admin privileges, ensuring that any given admin has only the right level of access, and you'll gain company-wide visibility that shows you actual progress. Leverage over 100 policies and advanced security features. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. So we kind of have to talk about this a little bit to understand basically what's going on. Um, with batteries that are rechargeable, uh, the chemical batteries that we have in all of our devices, typically lithium ion batteries, they are not meant to last forever and ever and ever and ever. And in fact, at some point they start to go bad. They only hold a charge for so long. And there are ways to improve upon the life and extend the life of your battery by charging in a certain way by limiting heat by there are a bunch of different factors and so battery tech has gotten pretty good and we kind of think collectively that the the next thing that's going to make a big jump in battery tech is a complete redesign a complete new type of battery before this one actually uh, sort of has some sort of breakthrough we have you know worked over time to improve upon lithium-ion battery technology and it's kind of, we're right there. So you can only do so much to kind of improve upon the extension of the life of the battery. And Apple has done this in a few ways, including optimized battery charging for the iPhone, especially if you're using wireless chargers, where it will quickly charge the device to 80%, but then afterward will kind of wait to continue charging the device until it is fully charged. And by doing so, it means less heat is being uh, put up against that battery and therefore shortening the life of it. That same thing now has come to AirPods. So if you have AirPods uh, with wireless charging built in and with uh, the ability to charge by sticking in, then you uh, will definitely want to turn on optimized battery charging for AirPods in iOS 14.2. Some other features, uh, the iPad, the, the new iPad, in fact, I have one here. It's in green, of course. Uh, this new iPad comes with an A14 chip. That's Apple's latest chip. It's the same one that's in the iPhone 12. Uh, when this first shipped, it did not have some of the a14 enabled features that the iPhone had and instead required the iOS 14.2 update. So if you have an iPad, uh, one of the new iPads, then you are going to want to check this out uh, or rather download this, this uh, new update because it will include that A14 technology. Uh, that includes scene detection. So scene detection essentially will look at a photo determine what's in the scene. Are you taking a photo of food? Are you taking a photo of a dog? Are you taking a photo of um, 
you know, a human being, and based on what it sees, it will properly make adjustments to its shooting of the photo to improve upon it. Uh, and then also auto FPS. So this is a uh, technology for when you are recording video to automatically reduce the frame rate if it would improve upon the video capture of whatever scene you're taking. Uh, those two technologies were not originally available on this iOS on this iPad, despite the fact that it does have um, the the A14 chip. So definitely, if you've got an iPad Air, a new one, um, you're gonna you're going to want to upgrade to iPad OS 14 to make sure that you're getting the best possible features on this iPad. Another feature is for folks with low to no vision uh, called people detection. This is an accessibility feature uh, that uses the magnifier app. Uh, that's kind of the, the, the place where you go to find it. But what it does is it makes use of the LiDAR sensor in the new iPhones to be able to let someone know how far away or how close a person is. So it can detect people and then it can help you figure out how close they are to you, how far away they are from you, and if they are sort of in your path or not in your path. It's an incredible feature. Uh, and it also, of course, helps with social distancing in general. And then some other minor changes, including a change to the Apple Watch app icon, not a huge difference, uh, but it does uh, have a little bit of a change. So I'll let you kind of be the judge of that. Go check that out and see um, if you can figure out what the change is there. And last but not least is an exciting one for many people who want to jazz up their iPhones and make them look a little different. And that is the introduction of new wallpapers. I'll launch the settings app. I'll scroll down and choose wallpaper. I'll choose, choose a new wallpaper. I'll choose stills. And within stills, you can see a series of options here. We've got live, actual, real photos um, of these beautiful scenes, as well as some illustrated versions of those scenes. And what's awesome is they have both dark and light versions of these wallpapers, meaning that when your phone enters into dark mode or your phone enters into light mode, the wallpaper will actually shift depending. And so that's why you can see that split there. It shows you, here's what it looks like in uh, dark mode, here's what it looks like in light mode. And these are really cool, um, and I am going to end up having to change my wallpaper to one of these uh, because it's just very pretty. So eight new wallpapers also added to iOS 14.2. Plus, as I mentioned, so many security updates. If you've not made that download yet, then head over and make it happen. Please do. General software updates and wait for it to uh, load and then you can get that update. Um, it is good for your device. It is good for the fun that you will get with the new features that are available. Let me know your favorite emoji if you'd like. Send it over to me. I can see it. I've updated to iOS 14.2. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Hands on iOS. I do appreciate it every time uh, for you checking it out. And of course, if you've got questions, if you've got thoughts, if you've got something you want me to tackle, well, please be sure to email me. It's hands on iOS or HOI at twit.tv. We want to make it simple for you. HOI at twit.tv. And be sure to subscribe to the show in audio or video format. Obviously, video is the best here. Uh, just by heading over to twit.tv slash HOI. That will get you links to the audio and video versions of the show across all of the different platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc. And on YouTube, you can subscribe youtube.com slash hands on iOS. Be sure to like the video, uh, share it if you'd like, and subscribe there as well. That certainly helps. Um, one of my recent videos about notes is taken off over on YouTube, and I appreciate everybody who's tuned into that one to check out everything that's in the notes app to make it so powerful. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time on Hands on iOS. Goodbye. 
I'm Jason Howell, host of Tech News Weekly here on Twit.tv, along with my co-host Micah Sargent. Each and every week, we talk to people who are making and breaking the tech news. It could be journalists writing amazing tech stories. It could be experts. It could be the sources of the stories themselves, developers, you name it. We bring them onto the show and we talk to them about why their story is resonating with the world. You can watch and subscribe by going to twit.tv slash TNW. Make sure you do that and you won't miss a single episode. We'll see you there.